Hello, Mission Church youth. I'm super excited about what we got today. I want to hop right into it before we do. March 12th, don't forget, March 12th, we're going to be meeting in person again, so mark your calendars for that. But right now, in the time being, we're going over the book of 1 John. This is the second week of reading 1 John, um, and I hope you guys did the reading plan. If you haven't read it, uh, stop the video now, do your reading plan. But today, we're going to be going over 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 through chapter 3, verse 10, all right? So we're going to go over that. If you haven't read it, please read that. Um, there is a reading plan with it, but we're going to hop right into it. All right, so last week, we discussed uh, this fellowship of eternal life and how this is the purpose of John's letter. See, God's given us this eternal life, this eternal fellowship that he's offering to us. And now John is moving on in his letter now to uh, his secondary point. And that secondary point is that God is light and how this light relates to the eternal fellowship. In John 1 verse 5, we see this metaphor of light. And this metaphor is meant to show contrast between light and darkness. See, light is God. Light is eternal life. Light is good. Light is purifying. It's the eternal fellowship is this light. And this light it also has a purpose. See, light illuminates. Light uh, drives out darkness. You flip on a light, there's no more darkness in the room. And light also shows what is true. See, when a gemologist is studying a diamond, he'll shine a light into it to see all the perfections and, and what truly is the nature of that diamond. So light shows us what is true. And this light has come into the world and the world is in a state of darkness and imperfection because of sin. And John is describing this in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. He says that the loving God, that us, for us to love God means that we cannot love the world because the world is darkness and God is light. And the world and the lusts of this world and the pride of the flesh is all temporary. It will all pass away. But God and his light is eternal. See, what is in darkness is temporary, but what is in the light is eternal. Now, this is very important to understand. And see, now God is offering us a life now in the light that is God. And this life in the light is completely different than in the darkness. See, in the darkness, we were trying to live by our own standards, and we kept failing by these standards. And and we've just been imperfect and we've just been making a mess of things. And God is now offering us a new life that's lived completely different. And the eternal fellowship, this light is eternal fellowship. Exiting the darkness, going into a light of eternal fellowship. That, you know, the circular structure we talked about last week is just going to keep coming back to this idea. So remember that that's the groundwork for this. And so, as we move on... The important thing to remember as we go into this section is that John is making a distinction now between those who are in the light and those who are in the darkness, those who are in the eternal fellowship and those who are not. So let's get into the meat. So 1 John chapter 1 verse 17, sorry, chapter 1 verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. So the first point that John makes is that all those who are internal who are in eternal fellowship must be obedient to this light and the purifying nature of this light. See, obedience is the first point here. Obedience is the first test. See, like I said about the diamond, this this light that is perfect when it shines on us who are imperfect, it shows all our imperfections and the sin we have. And the reality is, is that we do have sin, and us in the fellowship, we have to recognize that we do have sin. And John goes as far as to say that if we don't recognize that we have sin, we are calling God himself a liar. But what God is offering us here is the ability to confess our sins and be forgiven of our sins. So in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. See, once we accept this fundamental truth that we are imperfect and imper imperfect, and that we have sin, we now have the opportunity to bring that imperfection, that sin before God, before Jesus, and allow him to purify us and make us righteous. And we have to be obedient to this process. We have to be obedient to God's commandments and Jesus' commandments. The first test, 
This test is obedience. We need to understand that we must be obedient to Jesus' commands. 1 John chapter 2, verses 4 through 6 says, Whoever says, I know him, I know him is Jesus, I know Jesus, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. So to be in the fellowship, we must live as Jesus did and follow all of his commandments. Now this may seem a little heavy. I mean, I know I just said that the old life was hard and we were living it by our own standards, but God's given us a new life. But now it may seem that this new life is a little too hard. You know, it's kind of hard to live up to the standards of Jesus. But God has already addressed this issue of the old life. He's already addressed this issue of striving and imperfection. See, he knows we mess up. He knows we imperfect. He knows that we will struggle with sin for the rest of our lives until we live in eternity with him. And so he says in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, one of the most important scriptures, I believe, of the New Testament. He says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, but not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. See, when we mess up, we have to own it. We have to recognize that we are full of sin, like John has said, and not make God a liar. And just as John has pointed out earlier, we have to recognize that we still struggle with sin, but God himself came and died on the cross, and now we have an advocate. God himself is advocating for us so that when we sin, he can purify us and sanctify us and bring us out of that imperfection. Jesus is picking us up out of the ashes and purifying us over and over again. You know, it said he's a God of second chances. Yeah, he's also a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, and a million and, and an infinite amount of chances because we will mess up in an infinite amount of time. So, going on for here, from here, this may still seem a little too heavy. Like, you may still be thinking, I'm still struggling with sin now. And this is still a lot. John makes it a little bit more clear for us, even still. He states that he's not teaching anything new. That this is something we've seen in scripture over and over again. Now, what have we seen in scripture over and over again in the life of Jesus? Well, well, it wasn't the law. It wasn't the Ten Commandments. All those things are important. It's not the sacrificial codes of Leviticus or the um, cleansing ceremonies of the priests. No. It is simply fellowship. Circular structure of John. Fellowship. Our obedience, this test of obedience, boils down to this. Are you in fellowship? He breaks it down like this in 1 John chapter 2, 9-10. through 10. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. If our goal is not unity and living in the fellowship, then we are not in the light. We are not being obedient to the light. And we have forfeited eternal life. We must be obedient to Jesus and his teachings and, and his process of confession and sanctification. We must be obedient to that process in order to maintain this fellowship, this fellowship between us and God and ultimately between us and everyone around us and everything around us. And this moves us into the second test of the eternal flesh, the second test of light. And this is victory. The second test is victory. 1 John chapter 2, verses 13 through 14 says, I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, be I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. So there's a lot of repetition here, and we see that circular structure of, Jesus, uh, of John, and it gets a little confusing. But to boil this passage down, what Jesus, or I'm sorry, what John is saying is that young men, old men, you know God is victorious. You have overcome. Jesus has overcome. This light has overcome. And what he's saying is that God wins. God has won. God is winning. God is going to win. And everything that comes in opposition to God will lose, will ultimately lose. And this light, as John has told us in his uh, gospel, 
is that this light has overcome the darkness and the darkness was not able to uh, overcome it because God's victorious. This light's always victorious. And Christianity, the church, this eternal fellowship, in a very literal sense, is an army on the march conquering the darkness and rescuing all of those who are held captive by the darkness, like you and I. And then the test then becomes, do you love this conquest? Do you love this victorious army? Are you rejoicing over the victory or are you mourning over the collapse of darkness? 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes from the comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its disarrays pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So, do you want to see the fellowship engulf the whole world and ultimately destroy sin, destroy the pride of life, destroy the lust of the eyes, or are you holding on to something? Are you holding on to some of these prides of life, some of these things you haven't let go of in your old life? So the reality is that this conquest of God is not going to stop. And it's not going to halt just because you're in the way. See, God has done everything to have you join in this fellowship, to join in this conquest. But if you reject him and you reject this victory, you're just going to get rolled on over with it. That's the reality. See, we're, we are but a vapor in, in, in the great scheme of God and, and his, his story of eternity. We can't get so wrapped up in ourselves and our own prides that we aren't forfeiting everything that we have for the sake of the victory that this light is coming into the world. We have to be willing to lay down everything for this victory. And when we do it, we have victory. When we do it, we're living our best life. We, we fool ourselves thinking that if we hold on to things and when we don't let go of things, no matter what it is, we are fooling ourselves if we think we are giving ourselves victory by doing that. We only receive victory by giving everything we have to Jesus, everything we have to God, and, and surrendering it to the light. And this brings us to the final test that, that John gives. And this test for the light, for living in fellowship, is knowledge. See, John addresses the rise of any Christ in the church. These people are defined as causing division in the church. They are marked by how easily they can leave the fellowship and how easily they reject this eternal life. They reject this fellowship and the truth of Jesus. But John says that you, you who are in the fellowship, you have a special anointing. And what is this anointing? Well, the anointing is the knowledge of truth. What is this truth? Well, John again is coming back and circling again the words of Jesus who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. See, Jesus is teaching the way, his life, the, it's the truth. Everything that he is is the truth. And if we're living as Jesus is and we're, we, we know the words and we know the teachings of Jesus, this is the knowledge that's going to save us from the schemes of the Antichrists. See, naturally, if we are in fellowship with Christ and we are going through the process of confessing our sins and allowing him to come and purify us, naturally, we are going to conform to the image of Jesus Christ and become more like him. And as we become more like him, the light that is overcoming this world becomes part of us and lives inside of us. And this light becomes something now that what, what, what Jesus says in the Gospels is it's a light that we can't hide. It's a city on a hill that cannot be hidden and, and it's conquesting and it's victorious against the devil and the enemy. And we can discern who these antichrists are about how readily and how actively they don't live like Christ and how, how easily they reject this process of confession and repentance and, and sanctification. And if an in individual carries on in their sin while trying to partake in this fellowship without repentance, not only are they not in the fellowship, John says they are of the devil. Do they acknowledge their sin? Do they repent? Do they partake in the victory of the light over darkness? Do they ultimately love the fellowship? Are they willing to give up anything, anything for the fellowship? John concludes by defining this test in 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right 
is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother or sister, for this is the message you are from the beginning. We should love one another. See, ultimately, we must know what the fellowship should look like. So we can ultimately live out what the fellowship should look like. So that we could not so so that we won't be drawn away by the devil. We won't be drawn away by the schemes of the Antichrists. And this means we have to read our Bible so that we can know what God is saying, what he's teaching, so we can ultimately know his word. We have to pray so that we can constantly be in fellowship with God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit. But we also must, 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 must love one another. Our brother and sister, those around us. See, knowledge, the, the, oh, we can have all the knowledge in the world, but it must be anchored. It must be anchored in our love for each other. It must be anchored in our love for God. And that is where we will pick up next week, where we talk about how God is love. The reading plan for next week is going to be 1 John chapter 3, verse 11, uh, ch- chapter 5, verse 17. That's 311 to 517 in the book of 1 John, all right? I know this is a long one, so I'm going to close out in prayer. Um, but before we do that, I'm just going to quickly go over what we, we talked about today. Um, the first test of, of being in the light is obedience. Are you allowing God to, are you allowing Jesus to, to point out those imperfections in you? Are, are you confessing them or are you allowing him to purify you of those? The second is victory. Are you joining in the victorious conquest or are you holding on to things of this world? Are you willing to lay down absolutely anything, no matter what it is, to see this conquest come? And finally, do you know what this fellowship looks like? Do you know what is right? Do you know beyond a reason of a doubt that you are part of this fellowship and you want to see this fellowship succeed? Let's pray and then we let you guys go. Dear God, thank you for this fellowship. Thank you for your word, Lord God. Thank you for everything. You've just been so good to us, God. And we've been so undeserving, but you have been so good. Thank you for the process of sanctifying us over and over again. I pray we will be obedient to that. Thank you for the victory that we can partake in. I pray that we would learn to humble ourselves and join in in this fellowship of victory, that this light that is overcoming the darkness. And finally, Lord God, I pray that you will give us a knowledge of your son, your knowledge, Lord God, that we can overcome the devil and, and all the schemes of the enemy and the Antichrist that will rise up and try to cause division, that we will strike them down and that we will shun the devil and the enemy will flee. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, Mission Church youth, I hope you have a fantastic week. I will see you next week on the Devo. Make sure you're reading your reading plan. Um, If you have any questions, make sure to email me and it'll be right below. And I hope you guys have a fantastic time. Hope to see you guys March 12th. God bless you. See you all later.